So I did a quick video on Costco taking charge of their supply chain, and I was accused of stoking panic. Hello and welcome to Sweet Home California. My name is Jennifer. I've also been occasionally reporting on the number of container ships waiting near the port of Long Beach to be unloaded. That number is now up to 97 as of today, whereas a pre in pre-pandemic times, the number was it was unusual for it to be above 10. It was normally maybe one or two waiting uh, to, for their turn to be unloaded. The port of Long Beach in Los Angeles accounts for about one third of all imports into the United States. And each of those ships have hundreds, if not thousands of containers to unload into a finite space at the Long Beach port. Wait times have been reported up to three weeks and the cost of that downtime, treading water, is going to be passed on to the consumer. In one article, an artificial tree company based in California said that its four and a half foot tall artificial tree is going to rise in price by 40%. It's going to go from $300 to $500. Now, I'd never buy a four and a half foot tree for $300 to begin with, but nonetheless, the CEO said that they've never raised prices like that before, and they will be making less money on it this year than last year, even with that price increase. Even so, their shipments didn't arrive in time and they don't even know exactly where they are. Are they on the water or are they stuck in the port somewhere? It's possible that they could go out of business. The shortage of the containers, 95% of which are manufactured by China, is causing the cost of shipping to go up by as much as five times the rate that it was last year. So keeping track of impacts to the supply chain is not to stoke fear, but to warn Americans to be like Costco and Home Depot, both of which are taking charge of their supply chain to help control their costs and ensure that they have the stock on hand that they need. I'll include some links in the description below so you can see the full scope. Also, follow the Marine Exchange on Twitter, where they post daily the number of ships waiting offshore. The supply chain being this far out of whack has a number of causes, just like the lumber crisis this summer. Demand was down last year and factories shut down and allowed inventories to reach all-time lows. As things opened up, pent-up demand drew more goods than ever into ports that haven't been updated in decades to be handled by understaffed dock workers. Trucks are also in short supply, partly of which they're waiting on parts from China in order for them to even run. But part of it is also that they just have a lack of qualified drivers for the trucks that they have. So, unloading the ships faster won't help without more trucks and trains to get the docks cleared as fast as they are being unloaded. Complicating that is we have a fair amount of food that's imported in those containers that require constant refrigeration. I don't often really look into the country of origin labels for products that I buy at the grocery store. I guess I just figured that they're mostly coming from America or in the case of, you know, out of season or fruit that would be out of season up here that they're probably coming from South America. Well, I found that a bag of frozen organic peas that I had recently purchased came from China. So, you know, it had been in my refrigerator for a little while, my freezer. But, you know, what happens to all the all that food out there? You know, they do have expiration dates and things like that and what happens if they don't get that electricity they need before the truck comes up? So anyhow, I do not want to cause fear, but I do want to encourage you to plan ahead for your needs. The average American goes to the grocery store one and a half times a week. Actually, it's 1.6. We don't usually keep enough food on hand to last two weeks, let alone a month, let alone a season. It's not like, you know, our grandparents did where they had the root cellar and they have all these canned goods. So when snows come uh, in early winter, they can be self-sufficient all the way until spring comes again. And even into summer when their crops start growing again. We're not like that anymore. Lumber prices for plywood went from $30 to about 108 earlier this year. They're only now finally starting to come back down uh, close to normal. Non-essential projects got pushed off, but those that were in the middle of building a house couldn't just stop building in hopes that prices would come down before the rains came. They had to buy at the higher price so they could finish the house and protect their investment that they had already paid. Well, if the food prices rise, as even local sources have to compete for truck space, you don't have the stock on hand, then you are going to have to pay the increased price. That is, if you can even find the products. 
Don't forget, pork prices are expected to rise sharply in January, too, as new, a new California law about giving pigs 24 square feet of space is going to impact the, the entire pork industry, not only in California, but throughout America. 85% of Christmas decorations and toys come from China. Plan ahead and find alternative sources now. And we just need to break our dependency of China, on China. Let me know what your plans are to prepare in the comments below. Then please like, subscribe, and share to encourage others to plan ahead and not get caught by surprise. God bless and keep the faith, and I will talk to you next time.